back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in another special study. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father and Yeshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. Today we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 13. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. Now, remember, Ezekiel means strengthened by Yah, strengthened by our living God. Our almighty Heavenly Father is our source of strength. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 1, and it reads, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. So the Lord is coming to Ezekiel, and he's saying, Go talk to these people who are teaching and preaching out of their own hearts, out of their own minds. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Verse, verse 3, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. They're teaching and they're talking out of their own mind, out of their own spirit, not from the word of God. Verse 4, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. So we've got a timeline here, the day of the Lord that is coming, that is prophetic to us. That is when Jesus Christ returns here, steps, puts foot down, that begins the millennium, the thousand years, Revelation chapter 20. Now, one day with the Lord is a thousand years of man, and a thousand years of man is one day with the Lord. I'm paraphrasing 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, for documentation on that. So we are looking forward to this time, the day of the Lord, the millennium, when Jesus Christ returns here to stand. Now, we are going to stand with our Heavenly Father. You know, we stood with our Heavenly Father in that first earth age when Satan no longer wanted to be a protective cherubim. He wanted to be God. He still wants to do it, and he's got most of the world following him right now. But we are going to stand in the day of the Lord. Many people are sitting God's children to be taken by the Antichrist, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But we will stand in the day of the Lord. Verse 6, They have seen vanity and lying divinations, say the Lord say it. And the Lord hath not sent them, and they have made the others to hope that they would confirm the word. Now, think about this word vanity. Uh, vanity is emptiness. You have, think about a house of emptiness. A, a Beth of Vin is called in the word of God. A house of God is called a Beth El. A, a house of emptiness, a house of vanity is called a Beth of Vin. So, when people go and teach God's children not to be ready to stand in the day of the Lord, and they're teaching them their own salvation, their own salvation, it's telling them, you don't have to read the word of God. We're going to fly up out of here any moment now. That is not biblical, and we're going to get to it. So just stay with me for a minute. But they're hoping that others that would confirm their word, you know, they say, give me an amen, brother. And, you know, people who know less about the word of God will give them an amen. You know, the person who is preaching false doctrine out of their own hearts, out of their own minds, instead of the word of God, you know, they go to get that confirmation from somebody who knows worse, knows less than they do. To get that amen, brother. Verse 7, have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. This vain vision, empty visions. Now people all the time, I had a vision today, I had a vision today, I had a vision today. Well, you know what? If you study or you think about something all the time, you're probably going to dream about it too. Does it come from the word of God? Now that's the, is this from the Lord or not? Does it come from the Lord? If it does not align with the word of God, probably not. That is the, when people are preaching and teaching and saying they're seeing things and they're teaching out of their own hearts and out of their own minds and not out of the word of God. Verse 8, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord. Now where are the people going to go that God is against? Well, they're going to go to hell. Basically, and am I judging nobody, anybody? Absolutely not. It's written. It's going to be exactly as it is written. Those that God are against, if they do not change their ways, will go into the lake of fire to be blotted out for eternity. That's a given. So a lot of these people who are doing this, lying to God's children, they are forfeiting their eternal life. 
verse 9, And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity, see nothingness, and divine lies. Something that's divine is supposed to be holy, but you got lies attached to it. Divine lies. That's like an oxymoron. They shall be... They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And ultimately, that is what we have got to, for people to understand, that the Lord God Almighty is mighty. He is the Lord God, and there is no other. There is no other way but through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, if, if a prophet that sees nothingness and goes out and spews it, divine, all these divine lies, they shall not be in the assembly of my people. They will not be in the kingdom of God's children. They will not be in the uh, children of the kingdom, is what I'm meaning to say. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Think about the Lamb's book of life. Will they be written in there? Um, neither shall they enter into the la land of Israel. The promised land that we are looking forward to right now is eternal life with our living God. And the Lord God is against these people who are teaching and lying to his children. Where are they going to be? Verse 10, Because, even because, thou hast seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Coming in to seduce God's children, to lie to them, to pull them astray from the Lord God Almighty. And what is this? One built up a wall and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. One says something and gets others people to follow what they say and document or give credit to that it is a factual thing when in fact it is not the truth of God's word. Verse 11, say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall, there shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, a stormy wind shall rend it. So that, you know, you got somebody building up this great big wall, dabbing it with that un, uh, untempered mortar. Guess what's going to happen? It looks real good. It's standing tall, but it's going down. When you see, oh, great hailstones shall fall and a stormy wind shall rend it, that is to come, that stormy wind, that uh, holy ruach is, go is going to come. And all these teachings are going to naught, going to nothingness. Verse 12, Lo, when the wall is fallen, it shall be said unto you, Where is the daubing whereof you have daubed it? It's going down, regardless of what people say and think. When someone teaches a certain thing, a doctrine that is not congruent to the word of God is going down to nothingness. Now, whether a person chooses to go down with it or not, that is their own choice. That is their choice. The word of God says something differently. Verse 13, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in the fury, in my fury to consume it. Now, Think about these hailstones in um, Ezekiel chapter 38 that is coming. That is future to us. You know, that destruction on all the wickedness in the world is coming. And these lying prophets, teachers, preachers out there, they're going with it. Verse 14, so will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation therefore shall be discovered and it shall fall and they shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am the Lord. That is the point that God wants us to know. He is the Lord. There is no other. There is no other. Now, when you talk about Ezekiel chapter 38, 39, and you're getting into end times things, y'all, we're getting there closer every single day. But, you know, the reason that the Lord doesn't need our help on those, during those battles, why has he got this? Because he needs the enemy to know that he is the Lord God Almighty and there is no other, whether it be, you know, those who will come against the children of Israel, those who will come against uh the true house of God, the true church. Or the governmental people who are coming into play right now. 
all those things are going to nothing. Nothing that offends will be with us in eternity. Know that. But we've got to be prepared for what we are going up against right now. Verse 15. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar. And will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. Now, the Lord is not playing. He is putting it point blank here. Those who teach my children something other than what is in the word of God, they're going down. Verse 10, I'm sorry, verse 16. To with the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace in her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. There is no peace until the Prince of Peace returns here. That is Jesus Christ. Now, we know that there is one coming, sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God. He's going to have a seemingly peace. He's going to come in prosperously and peaceably, as Daniel chapter 8, verse 25 says he's going to do. But there will be no peace until Jesus Christ returns here. It's going to be a fake peace. It's going to be a fake prosperity. Verse 17, Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people and prophesy which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. Yes, there's been women teachers and preachers all through the time, all through time, always. And right now the Lord's saying, Ezekiel, go, go to these women who are prophesying out of their own hearts, out of their own minds, listen up, and prophesy thou against them, verse 18, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the women that sew pillows to all armholes to make kerchiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people? Will you save the souls alive that come to you? They can't save you. They can't save you. These women are sewing pillows over the armholes of God's outstretched arms. The Lord is calling his children to him. And they are covering him up. Why would they do such a thing? Verse 19. And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die, to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Y'all, they do it for money. They're doing it for handfuls of barley and pieces of bread. They are making merchandise of the souls of men, women, and children for money. For money. Verse 20. Verse Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. You got a lot of people saying, and we don't have to read this word of God because we're flying up out of here any moment. That rapture doctrine. What did he say right here? Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows. Wherewith you hunt the souls to make them fly. That flyaway doctrine. That's what he's talking about. You don't think that the Lord God Almighty knew back in Ezekiel's time that somebody was going to come along and put a doctrine in there to destroy his children. You haven't been paying attention then. I will tear them from your arms and I will let the souls go. Even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. Even the souls... If they belong to the Lord, and this is my opinion, if they belong to the Lord, they're going to hear the truth before it comes to harm them. But if they really, if they're just playing church, you know, so be it. The word of God is paramount in these end days. We've got to know working knowledge of what the word of God has to say. Because there are many prognosticators out there who are making souls, hunting them. They're making them merchandise, handfuls of barley, pieces of bread. Verse 21, your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You know, the hunting of souls, and I've heard it, and I've been in places, and I've heard it. Do whatever you got to do to get people in here, short of sin, get them in here. Now, he's a false teacher. He teaches flyaway doctrine, hunting of souls. The Lord says, I will tear them from your arms and deliver my people out of your hand. Verse 22, because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked, that 
he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. They they're promising him, him eternal life. They're telling him, don't read the word of God. They're saying, you don't have to know what the word of God has to say. We're flying up out of here. They're telling them, all you got to do is throw money in the till, say, I believe, and we're out of here. And they're not going to change. They're not going to do anything differently. They're continuing the way that they've always lived because they've been given an okay by those people who say that they don't have to study. They don't have to read. They don't have to understand the word of God. You better mark those people. When someone tells you you don't have to read, study, and know what the word of God has to do, they are a false teacher. Verse 23, therefore ye shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ultimately, they are going to know that there is only one God, and our Lord God Almighty is the living God. Now, therefore shall it, ye shall see no more vanity, no more vanity, no more emptiness, no more divine divinations. Now, I want you to remember back in Amos chapter 5, verse 5. When God told the children of Israel not to go to Bethel, not to go to Beth, uh, not to go to Beersheba, not to go to Gilgal, why did he tell them not to go to the, those places? They're supposed to be holy places because the word of God had been polluted by these false teachers and preachers out there they're still with us today but the thing is we are at the brink of the end of this dispensation of time and we are watching prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis and you've got a lot of people out there who have been told you don't have to read and study and know what the word of god has to say and they're going to be caught up in that whirlwind of chaos and confusion and potentially go and worship and serve the antichrist that falling away that defection from the truth you got people who are planning a defection during war the defection from the truth that's an apostasy they're planning on flying up out of here and it's not biblical Jesus Christ is returning here that's why the Lord says I am against those who teach my children to fly to save their soul Y'all, that's going to be it for today. If you like today's teaching, like, share, and subscribe. And let's get the word out. I hope you have a great day and join us again.